I'm Deb Stevens, and Dean Stevens and I are going to visit with you briefly about some of the characteristics of eastern gamma grass. When people give us a call, uh, one of the first things uh, they say is, what is eastern gamma grass? And so um, it's uh, usual for me to say it has high tonnage, so why don't mm -hmm. you kind of... Well, some of the, the basic description of gamma grass would be that it is a native warm season grass it is a member of the tall prairie grass family so it's in the same grouping as uh, big blue stem, Indian grass, and switchgrass. Um, although it's in that same grouping it probably doesn't share that many characteristics with other grasses or I should say in, in other words it, it has a lot of unique characteristics compared to those other grasses. A lot of those characteristics are actually very similar to what you would see in uh, a very commonly grown crop in the U U.S., which is corn. So corn's an annual. What about gamma grass? Gamma grass is a perennial, like the other natives, but its response to fertilizer and even herbicides is much closer to uh, corn than it is those other natives. Okay. Uh, why should uh, people consider it for upland or uh, Where's it flood seeded? area? Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, actually, gamma grass can be grown in a wide range of uh, topographies and climates. Uh, it responds uh, well to uh, fertility, so that's probably something that needs to be realized uh, in planning to grow, grow gamma grass. Um, it, it does well in wet sites that a lot of the other natives won't grow well in because of a unique characteristic in its root system called arenchyma that allows it to grow in waterlogged soils where other plants would uh, stop growing or start to die. So it kind of uh, is well suited for a variety of uh, sites then, mm -hmm. from lowland to upland. And right. What about haying and grazing? Can we do both of that? Are there challenges? Uh, those, that's the two common uses of gamma grass uh, for either a haying uh, operation where you would cut hay two to three times during a typical growing season in, in uh, the Midwest or East Coast areas. Um, the other option of course is grazing. The, the one thing that needs to be kept in mind for grazing is that uh, gamma grass uh, historically has been recognized as a grass that's very palatable in fact, it's often referred to as the ice cream grass or the candy grass of the native grasses, mm -hmm. meaning that livestock have a high preference for it. So uh, when grazing, uh, especially if it's in a mix with any other uh, grasses, uh, you need to recognize that they may be eating the gamma grass before they eat, eat anything else. And so you don't want to allow it to be overgrazed. Oftentimes when I get a phone call, people want to know what the yield and quality of eastern gamma grass is. What can they expect? Um, in our uh, experience, gamma grass can yield uh, seven to eight ton per acre from a total of two to three cuttings during a full growing season. The, pr the protein uh, can range from tests that we've sent in anywhere from 11 to 15 percent with uh, TDN in the 65 percent range. If, depending on where you're uh, raising gamma grass, what kind of environments it's in, what kind of management level you apply to it, uh, your yields could be more or less than that. But in our dry land conditions, that's what we've, we've seen. Okay, well we uh, have a lot of information in our uh, grower's guide. And we'll be back uh, with some more detailed uh, clips on uh, establishment and management.